welcome back to the channel. How are you guys all doing today? I know I'm doing uh, pretty well. You know, I uh, just got back from uh, rolling through some local canyons in the vet, and I gotta tell you, one of the greatest joys in life for me uh, is the symbiosis between like man and machine or lady and machine. And uh, rolling through the canyons in a car that is known for snap oversteer and having to modulate the throttle and the gearbox is such a rewarding experience. I know a lot of my friends out there, they much prefer uh, European cars like the 911 and stuff, but uh, I gotta tell you what, I love the, the rough nature of the VAT and the snap oversteer. I mean, it's like you, you gotta master the beast and it's, uh, it's so much fun. So I figured I'd shoot the intro to this video now because I'm in such a good mood. It was so rewarding. Lost so much of my tire tread, I don't want to even know, but hey, it's awesome. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day as well. Uh, quick wristwatch check. We're in my uh, Breitling Navitimer A23322, reviews up on the channel, and we're gonna talk about this video as well. So what's this video about? So this video is gonna be a comparison of some of the most iconic pilot watches there are. Um, you know, everybody kind of has their own idea of what a great pilot watch is, and if you ask you know, 50 different pilots, you're probably gonna get at least 30 or 40 different answers. There really isn't a great answer to that. And as I'm gonna show you in this video, I'm gonna show you three very popular and iconic, really, pilot watches, and just kind of go over them a little bit so you can kind of see some of the bigger ones that are out there. Now, I know a lot of you guys are used to those review systems where they give a point scale and they give winners and losers, but you know, I'm of the belief that there really isn't a right or wrong answer here, and it's different strokes for different folks. So I'll kind of go over the different watches, uh, namely the Rolex GMT Master II, the Breitling Navitimer you just saw, and uh, my friend has let me borrow his uh, IWC Mark 16. Um, so you're gonna get kind of three different flavors of a pilot watch, and uh, at the end of the day, whichever one you guys think is the best choice, you know, is, is the best choice for you. There really is a no right or wrong, but they all have their pluses and minuses. So I hope you guys really enjoy the review. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get it checked out, guys. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So in the left corner, we have the Breitling Navitimer, model number A23322, coming into us from La Chaux de France, Switzerland. In the middle, we have the IWC Schuffenhausen Mark 16 pilot watch. And on the far right, um, from Geneva, we have the Rolex GMT Master Pre-Ceramic 16710. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this is not going to be a direct lineup in terms of competition. As I said, every one of these watches is a winner and they represent very different philosophies for a pilot watch. So let's examine each one of these on their own. As you see that while they all are respected in the industry as pilot watches, they go about it in a very different way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and we'll start with the IOWC Schaffenhausen. All right, so this is the 39 millimeter Mark 16 IWC Schuffenhausen watch in the traditional Flieger style. It features a uh, IWC uh, 30110 movement, which is a modified version of the ETA 2892, uh, a tried and true workhorse that's uh, very well respected in the industry. And uh, what's common amongst Flieger style watches is this beautiful, highly legible, black on white, typically Arabic numeral dial. And uh, the greatest benefit of a, a dial like this is it's uh, very simplistic and it makes it extremely easy to tell the time. And if you're in a, a cockpit or you're on the flight deck and you're looking at all these different avionics going on, if you just want to quickly and simply check the time, this is going to be perfect because you can just glance at your wrist and immediately you can tell exactly what time it is. And that's what makes this a very good timekeeping instrument. Um, just a quick little overview. There is a full review of this watch on my channel. There's the IWC signed crown, and there's the international watch company signed case back, and uh, Fliegerer, as it mentions there as well. Now again, this is 39 mil, which is a pretty good uh, compromise uh, in size between a sports watch and a dress watch. And it's also, in this video, just curious, it's on a Horween strap that's aftermarket that uh, my friend Mark that owns this Mark 16 added to it. So as pilot watches go, this is about as simple as it gets. Again, this is a traditional Flieger style watch. And uh, you know, this is kind of what you would have seen on the wrist of pilots during World War II and earlier. This is kind of the origin of the flight watch. So it's not cluttered by any crazy complications. It's basically a timekeeping device, although it does feature a date over at three o'clock. But if you're looking for a watch that's just really quick and easy glance to tell the time, you know, this is a great companion. And uh, these things very much are uh, an icon and there's no shortage of mock-ups and homages to this watch and to such a wonderful design. So uh, there we go, starting off with the IWC Schuffenhausen 39mm Mark 16. All right, from Le Chaux de Fons, we now have the Breitling Navitimer. Um, this particular model is the A23322, and uh, the Navitimer is also an icon. Its history can be traced back to the 1950s, and this 
What makes this kind of definitive pilot watch is the inclusion of a flight calculator or a flight computer. And uh, basically what that means is you have this outer bezel and you line it up with the markers on the inner dial and by rotating them back and forth you're able to perform a series of calculations. Now to go and explain to you how to use this calculator would be a video unto its own, but for those of you who are curious to some of the many things you can do with a flight calculator such as this is you can do multiplication, you can do division, you can calculate ground speed, you can calculate miles per minute, gas consumption, climb and descend rates, you can do a multitude of things. Now I know some of you guys that follow me are private and commercial pilots. I would love to hear what you guys think. Of all the pilots that I've spoken with in my life that have actually owned one of these watches, all of them laughed when I asked them if they ever use it in flight. Um, you know, on a flight deck of an airplane, when you have all this modern <laughs> instrumentation around you and constant distractions, um, to sit and uh, look at a, a dial this complicated and uh, do these calculations, while it is simple in theory, you know, it's uh, it's definitely something I think that most would agree is better handled by other instrumentation or modern convenience. So, uh, you know, it's a very busy dial, and as we talked about with the IWC Mark 16, um, that's such an easy, legible, easy to read uh, watch. You have to say, in some respects, this is, does not fit that description at all. Um, if you're on, you know, again, on a flight deck or you're flying and you want to quickly check the time on your wristwatch, as you can say or see, this is definitely what you would call a busy dial. And, uh, you know, just looking at it, you've got the three subdials to keep track of, and you've got the whole flight computer. And uh, the hour and minute hand kind of get lost in this complexity. And um, one other feature, by the way, of the Navitar timer is that it is a chronograph. Traditional functions start stop up here at two o'clock. As you can see the second hand is now going. You can stop it and you can set it at the four o'clock pusher. Um, like the IWC, this one also does feature a date stuck between 4 and 5 o'clock. Um, for those of you who are curious, uh, I do have a review on this, but you're welcome to uh, also check out. But uh, the dials, you have a 30-minute totalizer down here, you have a 12-hour uh, complete counter down here at 6, and then you have constant seconds over at 9 o'clock. Um, you know, I, again, I wasn't going to, as I mentioned, there's not going to be any favorites or ranking on this video. Um, just for those who are curious, I know you guys are going to ask me at the end of this video which one of these is my favorite watch. I'd say it's definitely the Breitling Navitimer. Um, I just absolutely adore the way this watch looks, but it's very much a love it or hate it. And I know a lot of people find it too busy. And uh, I would say, too, in my own personal opinion, as a flight instrument of the three we're going to look at today, I would say the Navitimer is probably the worst of the three as a flight watch or a pilot's watch because, again, that at a glance legibility is definitely not a strong suit of the Navitimer. But you do have that beautiful function of a flight computer. You've got a great chronograph feature with uh, subdials as well and there's a lot of functionality but uh, again at a glance it may be difficult to register all the different features it has going on but again this is an icon and there's been no shortage of knockoffs of this style um, even Zen makes an avatimer of their own these days so yeah that's the Breitling Navitimer. All right, guys, last but certainly not least, we have the Rolex GMT Master 16710. This is an L serial dating from 1989, and there's a full review of it on my channel if you're curious. It's housed in a 40 millimeter case, and uh, this is powered by the Rolex 3185 movement, which I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, is based on Rolex 3135 architecture. However, this one has a GMT function. And uh, the history of this watch traces its back to Pan American Airways, or Pan Am for short. And uh, this watch has a long history with that brand. However, this is not the traditional style. Um, that one, the Pan American one, is what they call the Pepsi. I have the Coke. Coke is uh, black and red, like Coke. However, the Pepsi would have blue down here instead of red. Um, but as a pilot watch, you know, I think this is a really good usable work tool. So it's not quite as legible at a glance as the IWC, but I still think it is extremely easy to read at a glance. Um, the other great thing about this watch is that it has the GMT function. So not only do you have a bi-directional bezel here, which allows you to rotate time zones quickly, you also have an independent here GMT hand, which you can see right here between 11 and 12. And you also have your normal hour hand, so you actually can track multiple time zones at once. So as it's set now, it's coming up on 11 o'clock here. Um, the GMT hand right now is also showing 11 o'clock because it's pointing to 2300. It's pointing to 11 o'clock at night, that is. And what you can do is you can rotate the bezel bi-directionally either direction to quickly change time zones. And then you can use your 
GMT hand to now show, for example, that it is one o'clock in the morning. Um, the other way you can track multiple time zones is actually you can set the GMT hand and the hour hand independently. So what I typically do when I travel is I will leave my normal hour hand set to um, these times that I'm going to, and I will use the GMT hand to track my home time. So typically what I do when I set the watch up is I'll set the GMT hand, which is the triangular one in the red, between 11 and 12 at the moment, I will set that to my home time. And then as I travel, what you can do, which is really great about this watch, is as you can see here, I just advanced the day, you can rotate the hour hand independently. So I'll typically set the hour hand to the time zone that I'm going to. So at a quick glance, I can always check local time really quickly just by flicking my wrist and looking at it. But I can also always keep track of my home time by keeping track of the GMT hand. And again, by rotating the GMT bezel itself, you're also able to track, in theory, a third time zone if you wanted to. Um, but uh, you can also uh, use it to track local time on the GMT hand as well. Um, a lot of great functionality with this. Um, as with most Rolexes outside of the Cellini line, this one is presented in the typical oyster style case. So it does have some waterproofness to it. And, uh, you know, again, so this gives you the legibility of the uh, IWC almost. It's not quite as legible, but it's pretty easy to read at the glance. And then you get the function of the really easy to use GMT function as well. So, you know, as a pilot flying through multiple time zones, it's extremely easy to keep track of your home time and your local time. So uh, some great functionality there as well. So there you go guys, there's three very different takes on traditional pilot watches. Uh, to the far right again, you have the traditional Flieger style, quick and easy legibility of the IWC Schuffenhausen Mark 16. In the middle, you have the historic Breitling with the Flight Computer and Avitimer series where you have the ability to perform multiple complications. You also have the ability to use a chronograph to do additional calculations and keep track of independent time intervals. And then of course you have the uh, the Pan Am Heritage of the GMT Master, which is able to track multiple time zones. Again, each one of these watches has their own benefits um, and drawbacks. As I said, emotionally speaking, the Navitimer is probably my favorite of the three. It just very much speaks to me. However, as a flight instrument, it certainly doesn't have the ability to be read at a glance quite easily. Um, as an easy to read watch, the IWC for sure would win that award. And I think as just usability of features as a traveling companion, I'd say honestly the GMT Master is probably the most functional of the three as a travel watch. Um, beyond that, again, there's no real winner or losers. It all comes down to your uh, personal opinion and your personal needs. So go ahead and let me know what you guys think. But those are, uh, again, three takes on traditional pilot watches. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you uh, enjoyed that little review there. So as always, thank you guys so much. Uh, by the time this video is out or by the time you've seen this video, it probably would have creeped over 3 million channel views, which is just Holy crap, that's a lot. So thank you guys so, so, so much. Uh, I, uh, at the time of this video, I'm about 20,000 short, which I know it's gonna, in a matter of a couple days or so, it's gonna roll over. So, <laughs> well, I mean, what can I say? I'm speechless. Um, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for the support. And now we're creeping up on 7,000 subscribers. I feel like every month and a half, I'm jumping another thousand, so it's like crazy. So thank you guys so much for all the continued support. If you liked the review you just saw, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing the right things. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. I need that feedback. But also, please, as always, leave me a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see me improve. I'm always open to feedback. Um, beyond that, guys, links to my social media accounts are below. I'll be honest, the one that I'm most diligent about is probably Instagram, great platform for us to get together. I've also added a LinkedIn profile, which I've just created and I'll continue to edit. But as I mentioned in further videos or previous videos, this is something I'd like to do more on a full-time scale. So if you guys would like to work with me or you know NSC Insiders, or if you just want to contact on LinkedIn, go ahead and check out the profile and add me. And as always, guys, if you have uh, tips, tricks, or something we can work about together on the industry, please shoot me a line on LinkedIn and uh, let's build some content together. So thank you guys always as so much. <laughs> thank you guys so much as always, tongue twisted. And I'll catch you guys in the next video, which remember to see me in the next video, you got to subscribe below if you haven't already or over here or wherever the subscription button is or on my channel page if you want to watch my crappy trailer. So uh, thanks guys. Check it out later.